Growing up in the 90s, everybody was a fan of Power Rangers. If you weren't, you're lying to yourself. Anyway, so when 1995 came around and they announced that they were going to have a big blowout movie, we were all excited for it. Well, those of us who were old enough to remember it. But either way, what we got was what we asked for. The Power Rangers movie. So we start the movie with what every good movie starts with. Text! This is so going to be a bad movie. After our title opening, we finally get the beginning of the movie with all six Power Rangers and Bulk and Skull getting ready to skydive. Why I never got to skydive as a high schooler, I will never know, but I sure as hell wish I could. Alright, so let me get this straight. Instead of spending your budget on really good special effects and better CGI than what we get, you spend all your money on skydiving lessons for the actor. I can already tell this is going to be a bad movie. We then go from skydiving to rollerblading, you know, because that's what every high schooler did back in the 90s. And then Bulk and Skull finally get the courage to jump out of the plane. Alright, stop right there. You're telling me that in the span of time it takes Bulk and Skull to jump from the plane that the Power Rangers not only have time to change clothes but have a giant rollerblading thing before Bulk and Skull even land? That's not possible. So the construction workers reveal that they have found something of an alien proportion. The Rangers are then called to the command center. We meet the giant CGI floating head that is Zordon. And we get the backstory of our main villain. 6,000 years ago, a morphological being known as Ivan Ooze ruled the world with a reign of unparalleled terror. He was on the verge of completing construction of his ultimate weapons, the Ectomorphican Titans, twin machines capable of enslaving the entire universe. What happened to him? A group of young warriors like yourselves lured him into a hyperlock chamber and buried him deep underground. But now the chamber has been accidentally uncovered. You must return it to the depths before it is opened and Ivan is released. We go back to Ivan Ooze's egg where Lord Zed, Rita, Goldar, and the replacement for Squat and Babu that does not exist in the actual show appears and awakens Ivan Ooze. The Rangers teleport to where Ivan is at. He ends up transforming into one of the night people watching over everything until they find him and have some witty banter. Teenager with a big mouth. Not much has changed in 6,000 years. You obviously don't know who you're dealing with, Mr. Raisinhead. Real Raisinhead. Okay, first off, that is the first corny joke of the movie. So, I don't continuously say this is a corny joke, this is a corny joke, that's a corny joke, this is a corny joke. I've taken the time to mash together every corny joke from this movie into one big loop. Enjoy. A free dessert with lunch. They probably landed on the roof. You obviously don't know who you're dealing with, Mr. Racinghead. Woo! Where's my autograph book? Let's play kick the can. The makeup. Let me get the door. <laughs> Use, you lose. You know the funny thing about morphin? What's that? You don't appreciate it until you can't do it anymore. I'm a frog. You want us to take another whack at it? How about taking another quack at it? 
Bone to pick with you. What is this? You pick on the frog day? Yeah. Elevator going down. Talk about a splitting headache. Nice stereo. Hang in there, Rocky. Well, I'm hanging. I'm hanging. Ah, oozed. Okay, enough of that. We come to our first unmorphed fight where, complete with corny joke after corny joke, we eventually see the Power Rangers get overpowered to the point where they have to pull out their morphers. We can't hold them off. Are they finally going to do it? Let's do it, guys. Right. It's morphin' time. As of the morphing sequence, we go back to the command center where Ivan Ooze makes his way into it and completely destroys the entire command center with Zordon with it. Zordon! The next scene is their morphed fight complete with new weapons that don't exist in the actual show. Tommy taking over and completely one-upping everybody like he usually does. And an awesome CGI animation from Saba. Until their powers disappear. Hey, what's happening? We're losing power. So can you anybody explain why it t even after destroying Zordon why it takes that long of a period after being morphed to actually lose their powers does it like not sense that the morphing grid's been destroyed they make it back to the command center only to find out that Zordon is dying Alpha tells them of a new power that they can go search for if they have enough power to get them there. Are you ready? Yeah. We may not have our powers, but we're still the Power Rangers. We not technically, because you need powers to be a Power Ranger. So as the Rangers go to get the great power, Ivan Ooze appoints himself a leader and in the process creates via snot his new minions, the Tango Warriors. Back to the Rangers, they investigate the planet that they end up being teleported to, finding dead skeletons everywhere, and then we go back to Ivan who reveals his plan to Goldar and the pig. The Rangers are then attacked by the Tangas, and not having the ability to morph gets them overpowered until they are saved by a set of boobs. We're different. We won't fail. I don't think Lady Boobs likes you. Dalcia then gives them a warning to leave until. Our leader Zordon got hurt. Zordon. You say Zordon. Are you fucking kidding me? Does everybody in the universe know who Zordon is? We jump back to Zordon and Alpha who, through the viewing globe, see that Ivan Ooze is selling his ooze to kids. That eventually poisons parents' minds and makes them completely brain dead. Alcia then sprays basically fairy dust all over the rangers. And we get new animals, including bear, wolf, ape, crane, falcon, and poor Adam gets the frog. The rangers then use their ninjetti powers for the first time, defeating dinosaurs. 
and I frankly have no jokes for this. It's a joke in itself. Back to the subplot, Ivan decides that the adults of Angel Grove are no longer needed after they help him create his creatures. Our heroes eventually come to a rock quarry where the statues come to life and try to kill them. Rocky almost kills himself by falling off the edge. Aisha shoves herself into a corner. And once again, Tommy is the savior of the day. Once the battle's over, they eventually get their powers back via animal spirits that circle their bodies and sparkle. Alright, so you're telling me that all they had to do to get their new power was beat up a bunch of rock monsters and dinosaurs? Come on, creative team. You could have come up with something a little more harder than that. Once they get back to Angel Grove, the rangers automatically call for their zords because they have seen that Angel Grove has basically been destroyed. While the rangers deal with Ivan's minions, our mini hero convinces the kids to help him save the adults. How he knows how to run a train, I have no idea. So here's how the battle goes. Adam and Billy are the ones that tackle the scorpion. Rocky and Aisha are the ones that tackle the humanoid. Kimberly fails at trying to take down Ivan. And then, once again, Tommy comes out of nowhere and destroys the scorpion, showing once again that Tommy has to be a glory hog. Ivan eventually decides to get his hands dirty by taking over one of his machines, so the rangers call upon the Megazord. Morphing sequence, Tommy has to go save the kids because the monorail breaks and Ivan's destruction. In return, Ivan decides to completely destroy the Megazord by throwing it through building. So they finally figure out how they're going to destroy Ivan Ooze by using the meteor that is circling Earth. So they decide once Tommy comes back into play that they will take it into space and Ivan soon follows. I personally feel that this movie ends on an anticlimactic way, but at the same time, it ends with a ball shot. So Ivan's been destroyed. Fred saves all the adults from impending doom. So the only thing we have left is to resurrect Zordon. I personally do not like the ending of this movie. Why? Because it's bullshit. Oh, we have the power. Let's put our hands together and resurrect Zordon. It's ridiculous. Like, there couldn't be some sort of actual consequence to this movie. Like, one of the rangers dying. Zordon actually dying. It, nope. We have the power, so we're just going to rewrite everything that's happened in the movie and move on with our lives. It's like there's no consequence to what actually happens. Zordon could have died, and that would have made not only a lot of people pissed off, but it would have been like a whole what the fuck moment. But no. We get sparkle. Regardless of my opinion on the whole movie, I personally believe that we got what we wanted as kids seeing the Power Rangers on the big screen. We got better effects, better storyline, a new villain. It's a typical response to what you expect with a children's show turned into a movie. 
there's really nothing more to say. Is it a bad movie? For some. Mainly those who don't like Power Rangers. But for Power Ranger nostalgia fans, to this day, it is one of the best things that Power Rangers has ever brought to us. I'm your superhero critic. I stay super. You stay awesome. I'm out this bitch.